It's been a long time waiting for 4K 32 inch OLED monitors, and now they're finally here. So today we're gonna to be looking at, is it worth upgrading your Samsung Neo G8 to the MSI MPG321 URX? Let's find out. So starting with the price, the Neo G8 comes in at 1299 in the US and 1299 in the UK. Discount can usually be found in the US and UK of up to $300 or pounds. The MSI URX on the other hand has a strange price comparison. The UK price starts at £1,300 and in the US MSI have given an astonishing deal at $950. But prices are close when the Neo G8 goes on discount in the US. Moving on to some specs then, now I'm no hardware unboxed or HD TV test, but I've done some research and here's some realistic specs. Feel free to pause the comparison now to check them out, but I will go through some differences as well as some real time use in the past month. It's important to note that both monitors are 4K 32 inch 240Hz gaming monitors and you'll need a powerful graphics card to get the best from them. But that's pretty much where the similarities end. So the main differences between the two then is that the Neo G8 has a 1000R curved VA panel and the MSI URX has a flat QD OLED panel. VA can suffer with poor viewing angles and requires a backlight, whereas OLED has self-lit pixels which can turn on and off individually given greater contrast and vibrance. This also gives greater motion clarity. For HDR performance, the MSI URX leads the way as the Neo G8 has 1196 zone full array local dimming, which is a very good number but tends to slow the panel down and also give blooming around smaller objects. As there is so many zones though, this is hard to see on the Neo G8. OLEDs have faster response times but suffer with a potential burn risk. Until recently, they have not been as bright as the VA equivalent. One thing to note is the MSI URX has also got a built-in KVM switch and a 90 watt USB-C charging feature, which is working perfectly by the way. Now before we look at which monitor I kept, I want to point out some bad bits for both monitors. Starting with the Neo G8 is the curve. I've owned this monitor since release and really used to it. So going back to a flat panel is like a breath of fresh air. I feel the aggressive 1000R curve actually takes away from the image quality and the image can sometimes look stretched or crushed. The viewing angles from this is not great either, so you have to sit directly in front of the Neo G8. The Neo G8 is a heavy and large monitor and requires a sturdy wall or desk mount to keep it upright. But if you're relying on the stand, then it wobbles a lot. So if you kick the desk or press the menu buttons underneath, then you're going to move it easily so it's worth considering. The Neo G8 has no speakers built in or a digital output. For this price, I'd like to set a speakers or at least an SPDIF output. So if I have multiple computers fitted, like a PS5 and PC, then I only need one cable fitted to my external speakers. Once again, no built-in speakers with the MSI URX. It replicates the Neo G8. Ideally, a small set of speakers built in would have been great. Instead, we just have a headphone port, which isn't ideal. As for the MSI URX then, if you're relying on the stand, although it's stable, you don't actually get much flexibility. It doesn't have full tilt and pivot. Also, if you like a clean setup, the cables can hang underneath, which isn't ideal. The MSI URX has limited picture settings, and also you cannot define the picture settings between HDR and SD. Hopefully, this gets fixed in a future update. A bad bit for the MSI URX, which is pretty obvious, is the burning risk. There is features in the menu that can prevent burning, as you can see now. Hardware Unbox is currently doing a burning test with this monitor, and I will link it below. But a positive spin on this is the addition to three-year burning warranty. Although text and productivity is great on the MSI URX, I feel that long office hours on this monitor will promote burning. But the monitor hasn't been around long enough yet to give a good indication whether burning will happen. I will be using this monitor for office use, so stay tuned for updates. Both monitors are not great at auto switching between input devices. For instance, if I've been playing my PS5 and the next day I turn my PC on, then it doesn't always switch over to DisplayPort, which is quite annoying as I then have to manually use the menu buttons. I believe the MSI URX's pixel refresh feature is stopping it going into standby mode, so hopefully this gets resolved soon. So which monitor will I be keeping then? Because one has to go. Now, I'm not going to be too worried about the stats, 
but it is worth noting that the MSI URX has faster input lag, greater motion clarity, and more vibrant colors. So it's a win, right? Well, hold on a minute. I noticed that the MSI has a beautiful semi-glossy panel, which if the monitor lives in a well-lit room, then you could find that sunlight will hit it and could ruin the experience, especially if you can't control that light in your room. Now, the Neo G8, on the other hand, has a matte panel, which is great for dispersing light, but really affects clarity in my opinion. In my room, I have no light behind my monitor and can control the light. So it's a win for the MSI URX for me. I set up some scenes and brought my wife and daughter into the room. We all noticed that the whites and the brightness tended to go to the Neo G8, but when it came to vibrance, detail and motion clarity, the MSI URX came out on top by a clear margin. We all definitely preferred the MSI image quality. All the games and videos we played just looked incredible and more punchy on the MSI URX. Overall though, you would be happy with both monitors if they were not side by side. So I think you can guess which monitor I've kept. And of course, it's the MSI MPG321 URX. Now that is a tongue twister, right? But comparing it to the Samsung Neo G8, it definitely blows it out the park. Now, if you had those two monitors side by side, then you probably would notice the difference. But if you've already got one and you're happy with it, then I'll probably would just stick with it, right? But anyway, what happens next then? What happens with technology now? Well, we've got these 32 inch OLED TVs. We've got RTX 4090s, 4070s, 4060s. We've got PlayStation 5 Pro coming soon. I would love to see an OLED 32 inch TV coming out. That would be really sweet. And also what happens with GPUs and consoles in the future, right? Xbox is supposed to be releasing this Xbox Portable Pro thing, you know, this portable one. I don't know. I'm really excited, though, to actually find out what goes on here. So stick around on the channel. And if you like the video, please like, subscribe, hit the notification button, and I will see you again soon. Thanks, everyone.